overarchingly, what I want to say is that technology does play a role in the deterioration patient. But as clinicians, we know that your experience and your clinical acumen will always take precedence. So if we take a look at the current challenges that are shown in many, as I say, published and clinical studies, measurements need to be accurate. Um, and not missed or not recorded, and I think that was mentioned this morning in some of the presentations. And in busy, noisy environments that we all work in, that can be a real challenge. Where, when, whenever there is transcription error, either manual or if you're inputting into a device, that can actually add some risk. And again, busy, noisy, high-pressured environments, it can be written down incorrectly, we might miss it, it might be in our pocket in a piece of paper, or we press the incorrect button on, on the device. There can also be error with calculating scores. Um, and we look at aggregate scores. And, and, and again, the phones ring in, patients are needing assistance, etc. cetera. Um, and I don't know about all of you, but my brain can only take so much in at any one time when you're multitasking. So studies have shown um, low compliance with recordings. And this isn't HILROM data. This is generic data that's out there globally. Um, low compliance with recording of vitals, again, for the reasons that we've already discussed. And whilst ideally they should always be recorded in real time, that provides a challenge in itself. And there can be instances where it's just not possible to do that. Um, sorry. So you can also have transcription error. We've talked about that. And the time that's added into the EPR. We want to know in real time um, what is happening with our patients. Um, and we can't always be at the bedside. Um, and so, again, we need to question that. And the communication time. How quick does it take us to communicate in an escalation procedure? How quick um, does it take us to pick up the phone, to bleep? Um, our clinicians, our senior clinicians, maybe in a different area of the hospital. All of those are challenges. And is the patient history available? So when we, when we look at things like SBAR, is it, can we have the patient history there as well as all the fantastic information that devices can supply. And what time does that treatment get started? We've spoken about escalation and the changes that are coming along in 2022. So again, we need to look at the time that that treatment is started. So if we look at what we currently use today or um, I've used in the past um, in, a, in a paper form, and this is whether it's paper or electronic, um, we all know um, the different, um, sorry, just bear with me a second. <coughs> Excuse me. So we all know the different charts that we use. So the, the chart that we all use to plot the vitals, then the chart to take each individual score, then the chart to check what the aggregate score is, and the single parameter trigger. And we're all used to all of these, whether they're electronic or, or whether they're in, in paper format. And then the chart that we look at with our recommendations from the Royal College of Physicians. Um, and again, that may change as we know in the future. So what can a connected vital signs do to enhance that workflow? So accurate measurements. We have to be accurate, otherwise we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be um, utilizing all of these. And as Kelly said, these devices are used in many, many trusts all around the UK, Ireland, and in fact, around the world. So. As soon as vitals are taken, they can be added to any EPR system. Um, in real time, we get high compliance because they can't avoid doing anything on a device. So it's like a prompt when you're at that bedside in that really, really busy environment. Um, so there's no delays. There can be a reduction of transcription errors and no calculation errors because the device is going to calculate that early warning score, both single parameter and as an aggregate, um, and it will be displayed right at the bedside on the device. What it will also do is display any escalation, and that can be absolutely configured to, to your hospital or your trust. You've all got different, slightly different escalation policies and procedures, and it will be written according to you. So the prompt is there at the bedside without leaving the patient. So um, you can have patient initial condition and history because it's now gone into the patient care record in the EPR system, all of the early warning scores, doesn't matter whether it's news to, modified or news, any early warning score, all of the trend data is there. So you can see, because it's not just about the, the singular, it's about how that trending is happening, as we all know. 
the patient history is there in the care record, and treatment prompts can be seen anyone, any, by anyone anywhere in the hospital immediately. And it's all documented, so everything is recorded. So just to show you, we looked at those paper uh, charts. So here's where they are on our device. And, and Rob is going to do a live demo very shortly. So there's all our patient demographics, name, number, et cetera, which has been pulled down from the care record. There's one that our first chart. So all of our vitals are recording. And it can be done in, in, in a, approximately 15 seconds. Then the second screen you'll see there is from the parameters. We've manually put in our AVPU or CAVPU, depending on what you're using, and we've manually put in a pain score. And you can see there that the device has calculated. It clearly shows if there is a single parameter greater than three, clearly shows the aggregate score, and will show on there what particular escalation policy you want written in there so that everybody is very, very clear. I think I'm going to hand over to Rob now. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, so what I'm going to do for the next uh, 10 minutes is hopefully turn the non-technical people, have an understanding of how this actually works in the organisation. It's really good to see the monitor at the bedside and being used by the caregivers, but this will give you a, uh, an example of just how the data gets from A to B and back to our device as well. So it's not too technical at all. It's very, very simple to follow. So if we look at the device in the top corner, and what happens is we have a member of staff that will have an identity badge, probably something similar to this if you use single sign-on in your devices or something like that, or you can scan something. We can scan your badge. That will send off the green arrow across our uh, middleware. That's our software that holds, uh, holds all our device data into where your staff identification database is. Okay, so that recognises you. So at the device level, we've got positive staff ID, so we know exactly who's using the device, when and where. The next part is the nurse will take the scanner. They will scan the patient wristband. That will do exactly the same thing, go off to where your patient identifier for data is, and that is the blue line that you see. That will go off and find the patient information, last name, first name, hospital number, date of birth, something like that. That is then shown on the device, as Claire showed in the earlier slide. So now we've got who's the member of staff and who's the patient. So we've got positive ID straight away at the bedside. Then the nurse will use the device as normal, take the observations, complete an early warning score, and the dark, very dark blue or black line you can see on that screen, that's the information going back into your record system. Now, you may have a national record system like Cerner or Epic that you're transcribing into. You may have a, may have a handheld observation system like Patient Track or Nerve Center you're transcribing into. All our devices comply um, with these systems. They've all been fully tested. So you can get your data straight away on, the, on, the, uh, on your handheld device as well. In addition, we can send in addition to the data, uh, the patient data, the staff and the ID, we know what time it was taken, what, what device was used as well. So all that information goes back to your central record system. So you can positively track all that information back to the device um, as well. And then there's additional uh, information we can collect that the medical engineers can use to uh, monitor and repair and track the devices actually in situ while they're actually in place as well. So it's very, very simple to use. This is all the stuff that happens. This is all the good stuff that happens behind the scenes that you don't get to see. You just get to see pressing buttons and tapping screen and off it goes and it's whizzing its way straight into your record system. So it's very, very simple to use. And so we've got lots of these connected across the country all using this very similar method. The only, the only thing really that differentiates hospital to hospital is where are the electronic records held and what does that look like? and how do we identify staff? Apart from that, everything's pretty much the same, really, from how the data goes around the network. So what I'm gonna do now is hand back to Claire, and I'm gonna go to the back of the room, and hopefully you'll see a live demonstration of this going on. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Wasn't quite expecting a room this big. <laughs> yeah, we were expecting a slightly, a slightly smaller room, so um, we've been uh, working hard in the background. So at the back of the room, we have um, a, a wireless device, um, what, you're, what you see on the uh, left-hand side of the screen, is that on your left? Yeah. On your left-hand side of the screen is um, a mock EPR. So this is just a, an EPR that Rob and his team have built because we didn't, we wanted to be generic. Um, and over on this side of the screen, you can see um, that's the front screen of a, of a, a connected spot monitor. 
Um, so what Rob's going to do now is show you the full workflow. So he's going to scan his ID badge, um, just like you've all got your smart card. So he's going to scan that. He's, it then prompts him to scan the patient ID, so it comes off the patient wristband, which are most of majority of them now have got barcodes on. And then what you see is the front screen of the device. Now, just for purposes here um, and for sex, uh, social distancing reasons, Rob's just going to manually put in some parameters. He's putting his glasses on. <laughs> so um, the nice thing to say about this while Rob's doing that is that the, the CSM can or the devices can work in two ways. So we can do automated, so you put your blood pressure cuff on, um, you take their temperature, it will read the pulse rate, et cetera, and it can be automated. But if you're concerned or you think something might not be quite right because your clinical acumen absolutely is the precedent, then you can manually override. So you can manually put in. So if you think your patient's with an irregular pulse rate and things like that, and you think, actually, I want to do it manually, on all of our devices, you always have the option of manual override. Okay, it doesn't have to be automated. So it looks like Rob's done that. Um, so for the purposes now, um, we're going to look at the early warning score. So again, you've got your manual input, as I said before, which Rob is now going to do, hopefully. The patient's alert and they're on air. Then it asks you which scale you want to use. And there you can see on the screen um, exactly that I showed you before. So you can see all the single parameters, you can see the aggregate score, and you can see the required response that's, that, that is needed within your trust. Rob is now going to press OK. It's going to press Save. And it's sent straight through to the EPR. Done. So what you'll see now on the opposite side of the screen is that that, pa that patient has now come to the top of our EPR system. So we can clearly see, a it will be similar to the smart, any of the smart boards that you're currently using at the moment. So we know the exact patient, date, time, et cetera, what all their single scores was and what's actually happened with the trend. Have they escalated up, have they escalated down, or have they remained the same? Um, and some of you are already using this within your, your trust, so it's just like your smart boards that you're using. And I think now, thank you, Rob, and I think now I'm going to hand back to Kelly. Thank you. This IT works so much better than the IT in our Hillrom office, I can <laughs> promise you. <clears throat> so there is a wealth, as Clara said, of clinical studies out there. Um, not, not our clinical studies, but, but studies that have been done by... by by healthcare professionals around the world. They're all available. Um, on our stand, you'll find this Nursing Times education series that, that we supported that coincided with the launch of our respiratory rate feature. So you are now able to take a recording of the respiratory rate via your SpO2 sensor, <coughs> which then automates that process. We all know how challenging respiratory rate can be. And this is a Nursing Times clinical compendium with all of the data in there. We've also got some clinical studies that demonstrate the, the value that this system offers. So they're available uh, from us or, or you can go and get them, you know, from, from wherever you find all your, your clinical data. And so just to summarise here, um, for, for us it's about advancing connected care, like I said at the start. So it's around being connected, reducing errors and saving time, time that you can release back to nursing care. And, and we know after the, the, the conversations and the talks that we've listened to this morning that the key to improving outcomes lies in the monitoring and rapid detection of any changes. And using a connected technology platform um, with patient assessments that can be standardised has huge, huge benefits. It delivers a real-time early warning score at the bedside, and it's that key about at the bedside, and it's actionable data. It's data that you use your clinical experience with to inform your decision-making. This technology, in the most part, is already available in your hospital. A I mean, Hillrom have over 30,000 of these devices around the UK, but we're not talking about a, a Hillrom device. Whoever is your um, low acuity vital signs provider, as long as it can be connected, then it can do this for you. So this is technology that's already available within your hospitals. Um, 
thank you for listening to us. We're outside just as you go out if you want to have, if you have any questions for us, want to see the device in action um, or want any further information. So thank you very much.